in today's dollars the amount that we spent per troop uh, in World War II uh, was $50,000. We're spending 10 times that per troop in Iraq. We can expect that the per troop cost in Afghanistan is higher than that. I would expect that it will be between 20 to 50 percent higher cost in upfront cost per troop. There is so much waste, so much inefficiency, so much absurdity in what we're doing at the moment. These enormous funds that did go out to Afghanistan, uh, but they were given, uh, the money was given to contractors who subsequently subcontracted and subcontracted. And by the time you get to how much money reaches the ground, maybe 40 or 50 percent of that money actually reached the ground for the projects because all these subcontractors were taking 10 percent off as, as profit. Right now, Pakistan is the most dangerous country in the world. It's nuclear armed, it's highly unstable, um, and the breakup of that country and the emergence of kind of a nuclear armed Pashtunistan controlled by Al Qaeda would be something like the worst nightmare in the world. The worst scenario is one in which our efforts to project military power into Pakistan in order to try to stabilize Afghanistan have the unintended consequence of destabilizing Pakistan. It should be engraved on the minds of every American diplomat everywhere in the world. Do nothing that will further destabilize Pakistan. Those additional forces are plenty of additional forces, plenty enough to uh, continue to fuel suicide and other forms of terrorism that is anti-American inspired terrorism, uh, which is just simply not a good thing. Before our invasion in the fall of 2001, Afghanistan never experienced a suicide attack in its history. This is not some faraway place for someone like me. I mean, this is my home. If I'm living there and a bomb was to fall and you see your daughter's leg flying in the air or your wife is hurt, then it's very difficult for you to have a sympathetic view towards uh, the greater cause, even if you are part of collateral damage. It is a big tragedy, I think, that the new administration hasn't used the fact that it's got a healthy mandate to develop an exit strategy and announce it like they've done in Iraq and move out fairly quickly. We have not yet gotten to a strategy that actually admits an exit. You can't go to war, send Americans in harm's way, spend billions and billions of dollars without having a, an objective so that you'll know A, whether it's achievable and B, when you've achieved it. There is a need of, uh, for U.S. to think about another way to deal with this not in the fighting way. If Taliban also join with us and they come and participate in the government and the parliament, situation will, in, uh, will change very soon. An exit strategy by the United States with the assistance of regional powers, I think in the medium term is the only possible solution. A sustained, well-resourced, well multilateral, police effort to identify and root out terrorist networks. Again, something that is accomplished not through invading and occupied countries. <laughs>